Helen is a teenager, a college student, engaged to be married, and her hobby is jumping out of airplanes. Don is a building contract and a partner in a restaurant and lounge. James is an associate county agent. He assists farmers in planning and implementing their farm programs and works with 4-H youth groups. Nan is married and has two children. Besides being a housewife and mother, she is also a part-time secretary. These very different people have one thing in common. They all drive cars, and they all use alcohol and other drugs. Sometimes they do all of these things at the same time. Every driver has heard the slogan, if you drink, don't drive. Every driver has heard alcohol and gas don't mix and that a drunk driver is a dangerous driver. Most of us believe these slogans, but only about other people, because we have seen how they act when they've had too much to drink. Unfortunately, sometimes, tragically, many drivers believe these things only about other people, not themselves. Some of us believe we can beat the odds and drive safely, even when under the influence of alcohol. I'll take a patrol car again. You think you're going to make it? Oh, I'm going to make it. I go home every night this way. The four persons you met earlier have volunteered to participate in a demonstration in hopes you may see in one of them a part of you and that you may take a second look at how you handle alcohol, drugs, and driving before you have to ask yourself, why me? What you're about to see is completely unrehearsed and real. You will witness and be told exactly what happens. We have brought our cameras and volunteers to an isolated area of Seabrook Island off the coast of South Carolina. Here we have designed and constructed a series of simulated obstacles similar to what one encounters in normal driving situations. Our volunteers will be tested in their driving abilities in two key areas, both of which are likely alternatives to safe arrival at their destinations. First, driving violations which could result in arrest and second, driving errors which could result in accidents. Each volunteer will be scored on three test drives, the first sober, the second while under the influence of alcohol, and the third while under the influence of a combination of alcohol and another drug. You will be the judge of the results. Here is the course and the obstacles to be negotiated. Stop signs, Posted 15 mile per hour zone, parallel parking, a yield sign with an approaching car, posted 25 mile per hour zone, reaction to a pedestrian in the road, staying right of the center line, following directional signs, stopping before entering a highway, passing between obstacles. Reaction to an unexpected situation and negotiating an obstacle. This is the end of the course and the volunteer will be told simply to return to the starting point. However, the scoring will continue on the return drive. To make the test as nearly real as possible while providing safety for all concerned, certain other situations will be added to the test. First, the test will take place at night the most common time for driving while under the influence. The test car is dual control, and a qualified co-driver will be present in case needed. In addition, each volunteer has been assigned a partner of the opposite sex and an observer, 
so four passengers will be in the car, increasing the normal distraction present in many driving situations. Each volunteer will be followed by a second car containing the scorer and a cameraman. The second car will add the distraction of having headlights in the rearview mirror throughout much of the test. The same person will score all volunteers. During his sober test drive, Don demonstrated that he was somewhat careless in his driving habits. He committed four violations and had one potential accident when he failed to stop for a stop sign. James did better. He had only three violations and no accidents. Helen demonstrated excellent driving abilities and followed traffic regulations closely. She committed only one violation and no accident possibilities. Nan was also a careful and well-coordinated driver. Like Helen, she had only one violation and no accident situations. All drivers demonstrated that they could negotiate the course with a minimum of difficulty and were able to follow correct driving practices. After completing the sober test drive, the volunteers joined a staged cocktail party. Each volunteer was instructed to drink alcohol in their usual manner, in company with other volunteers and their assigned partners. A trained observer kept close watch on each volunteer. When an alcohol level was attained which would affect driving abilities, the observers simply told the volunteer, it's time to go. James had trouble on his drive after drinking. He failed to stop, exceeded the speed limit, had difficulty parking and was weaving over the center line. With a blood alcohol content of 0.11, James committed nine violations and had two potential accidents. The blood alcohol content, or BAC, of each volunteer was taken following their drive. The test was administered by a licensed operator. At a BAC of 0.10 or higher, a person is considered under the influence. Helen was the second driver in the alcohol-only test. She also had difficulty with the course. With a BAC of .08, Helen had nine violations and one possible accident. She anticipated obstacles, stopping even before they appeared. She also was guilty of weaving and bad turns. She speeded up and tried to hit the child mock-up, but missed. With a BAC of .12, Don also anticipated obstacles, had slower reactions, and handled the car with much less proficiency than when sober. He was guilty of seven violations and had two potential accidents. The final volunteer in the alcohol-only test was Nan. She displayed the best control after drinking, although she reached the highest BAC, 0.15. Her biggest mistake was failure to stop. Her score with a 0.15 BAC showed six violations and one accident. On the second day of the test, the volunteers added the use of drugs to the test situation. Dr. L.D. Milne, Dean of the College of Pharmacy at the University of Arkansas, was licensed to administer the drugs. During the third driving test, the participants were to combine various drugs with alcohol. The drugs chosen were those drugs which were quite readily available to the American public. Except for marijuana, all the drugs are legally and medically used drugs which are widely prescribed by the medical profession. In each case, the doses given were normal doses that a person would take if he or she had a particular ailment. The drugs used were Benadryl, which is an antihistaminic compound very similar to all antihistamines found in over-the-counter allergy and cold preparations. Needless to say, these drugs are taken by a large segment of the population. The second drug used was Valium. This is the most widely prescribed minor tranquilizer used in the United States. The third drug used was Darvon. Darvon is a non-narcotic pain reliever that is again widely prescribed for the relief of minor pain. All three of these drugs have the side effect of drowsiness. When taken in combination with alcohol, the drowsiness and intoxication effect 
is greatly enhanced. Marijuana was also used by one participant. Marijuana has been shown to affect a person's ability to judge speed, time, and distance, and consequently can affect a person's driving. That evening, the volunteers again were permitted to drink alcohol according to their preference. To minimize risk, each volunteer underwent a physical examination and personal medical history check before being selected for the test, and a physician was present at all times. For his third test drive, James was given a normal amount of Benadryl, 100 milligrams, and then permitted to drink. During his drive, he consistently exceeded the speed limit and used the brake for no reason. He failed to obey stop signs and drove left of the center lane. With a BAC of only .08, but with the drug Benadryl added, James' score shot up to 20 violations and seven accident possibilities. Nan took 10 milligrams of Valium, a normal therapeutic dose. At the party, Nan appeared to be nearly passed out, yet she still was willing to drive. After a combination of alcohol and Valium, Nan was very overcautious, stopping unnecessarily, anticipating obstacles, and hugging the curb. Despite her care, Nan committed 11 violations and had six possible accidents with a BAC of 0 0.10 plus a popular tranquilizer, Valium. Don was given 65 milligrams of Darvon, which is a normal dose for this commonly prescribed pain reliever. Also, although he'd been told not to do so, he was observed smoking marijuana. The combination really had an effect. Don hit two pedestrian obstacles and ran over the child tricycle obstacle. He showed a lack of judgment and seemed not to care what happened. He was consistently over the center line and failed to obey stop and yield sign. He made wide, weaving turns without signals and would apply the brakes for no reason. With a blood alcohol content of 0.11, less than on his second drive, Don committed 19 violations and had three possible accidents and three actual accidents. After riding with Don, our safety officer was almost ready to quit. Helen was the last and worst of the drivers in the alcohol and drug test. Her drug was marijuana. Helen violated just about every traffic rule. She drove with abandon and seemed to take everything as a big joke. With a BAC of only .07, but with the addition of marijuana, Helen's score soared to 23 violations and 10 accident potentials. You know he was coming? No. I had no idea. I just ran on brakes. My car had such a good brake. Peggy was, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he was about to die. Yeah. And everybody else just put their eyes over their heads. Well, Why don't you come back to give some slow? I did. You don't think you went slow? I slowed down for the curve. Um, did it slow down coming through here? No. Before the I was going to have 20, 25, 20. You expect the tricycle? I did expect the tricycle, but it wasn't there. And I didn't slow down for it. You didn't? No, I didn't. Because I wanted to run over it. <laughs> I really did. I wanted to run over it. Bob kept, last time Bob kept sitting behind me. I didn't run over it. So this time I really wanted to run over it. I enjoyed this time. <laughs> I really did. Did you drive the chalk running? Hell no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no way, man. Last I stopped you and said you were drunk, what would you say? No, stop me and tell me I was drunk. Um, I would tell him that I was drinking. But I don't think I'm drunk. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you feel driving? You wouldn't drive like that. You think you're pretty drunk or what? Yeah. Very drunk? Yeah. On alcohol or what? Combination of two nights. Combination of two nights, alcohol and drugs. How do you feel? Proud. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm proud. What do you think about what just happened to you? He had a firm grasp on his car. Believe all along, but you don't drive when you've been drinking.